Well, I'll get the I'll get the boring stuff out of the way first. Um, <laughs> Billy asked me to do this at Archangel Radio last uh, last fall or last spring. I'm sorry, a year ago. Um, they had a 1410, I think they called it, fundraiser, um, and he came to me and asked me he wanted somebody to do stats. Um, and uh, you know what? I, I agreed to right away. Great football fan, St. Michael fan, everything like that. But to be honest with you, the, the main reason I did it, Billy, I became Catholic Easter 2018, and went to mass here for many years at St. Lawrence before before I became Catholic. Anyway, Billy was the first person to come in and ask me, he said, Tony, do you know what you're doing? And he, I mean, he said it that way. And he actually, very few people would even realize this, but he helped me through that process. Very little was, of course, fantastic, but, but uh, uh, Billy was just fantastic helping me through that. And it wasn't so much showing me the way or anything, he just asked me questions. And they were very blunt questions like that that, that made sense to me. Um, and so that's, he really led me into to that way, helped me become Catholic. So when he asked me to, to help with the broadcast, I, I couldn't say no. Um, so that's my, I guess, sad point. I really miss Billy from that standpoint. He really helped me along from those lines. Um, but when it came time for football season, of course, he's all business. Um, and we got going right away, uh, right away when they started practice out there at uh, St. Michael Family Days and things such as that. Um, he wanted to make sure everybody was out there. Uh, Robin and uh, Chase and myself out there, just make sure all the equipment's running, everything's going well, and everything like that. And it was actually a fantastic night. I, I really wasn't expecting anything like that. Uh, my daughter was a uh, cheerleader, of the original 99 students out there, and so I was at some of the original first practices of the football team. So that was a complete difference. You know, we walked out there, family day, there was people out there partying and having fun. I think they were selling snow cones and stuff like that. And, and, uh, and that's that so different from when the, that first year when we started in 2016. And to see that and grow with that was really a really fantastic thing. Um, that's the night that Billy interviewed his son. Um, that was a nice interview and, and uh, or just a fantastic night just to kick off the year like that. Um, and then, then we really got serious as the season went into it. Um, you know, I, I really kind of considered it a volunteer thing when he asked me to do it. And, uh, and as we got into the season, he kind of got a little serious about it. And I was like, Billy, I'm, I'm, I'll do it. I'll handle it. No problem. He says, I want you practicing. I want you doing this. So, so I did. I, I practiced. I pulled up some NFL games, and I sat, and we did the app, and I did some uh, uh, stats on the app to, and, and, uh, at some professional games on TV and things such that. And, and we got going for the season, um, and it was exciting. It was a lot of fun. The uh, first game was just, again, just like family night. The atmosphere, fantastic, just fantastic. The, the growth that that school has gone through to get to that point is just amazing. Um, the crowd and the, everything, it, it felt like just, just it was sell, felt like a sellout crowd, kind of. Um, and then we got going, and of course, Billy, he's, he's right on top of everything. He was very meticulous about everything, rolling cords. Boy, he taught me how to roll cords. I think that took 15 minutes or so just to how to roll up cords. Um, but once the season got going and everything got going, boy, we, we, we just kind of fell together. And I think we did a really good job. Um, unfortunately, Billy, Billy came to be ill. I think it was game four. Um, and uh, I went out to his house on Thursday, Wednesday night. It was a Thursday night game. And uh, I sat out on his front porch while he sat on the window and on the couch on the window on the inside. And he yelled through the window as, uh, as I sat and we, we played with the controls, and we hoped we could get the the uh, uh, broadcast off the next night. Um, did some FaceTiming, things such as that, um, and uh, it worked out pretty well, actually. Uh, Billy got sicker, um, and uh, brought my son in to help do the uh, do the stats. He stepped up for the year and, and helped with that. Um, <clears throat> and as Billy got sicker, just we just kind of had to all step up, I guess. Um, it wasn't just. It wasn't just Anthony coming aboard. It wasn't just me stepping up. It was Chase. It was Robin. Everybody, um, everybody here at Mike, um, and, and everybody is here at Archangel Radio. Really, really brought us together and helped us along quite a bit. Um, and then with uh, Billy's passing, um, I think we just carried on the torch, and that's what we want to do from here on out: um, is, is do the same type of job he did. Um, I think it's important to, to remember what he thought was important as far as the football team. If you can go back, there's a sign-off he did last year, I think it was, where he said, make sure you thank your kids. Go in and tell them thank you very much because this is, you know, all important to them and, and, and really let your kids know that it's important what they're doing and you support what they're doing. As, uh, as we wrap this up, I just ask you, make sure you, you talk to those students. Let them know that you're seeing all the great things that they're doing because they work hard and, and you know, we should make sure that we point out the positives in what they're doing every oh, yeah. single day. Definitely. 
and we're on a one-game win streak now. Hey, that's right. We take that <laughs> win into next season. That's but, right. So here it is. So as we wrap up, all right, let's hear it, Robin. St. Michael. Defend us. You guys have a great night, and thank you for supporting St. Michael football and Archangel Radio. You know, that was Billy in a nutshell. It's all about the kids. It's all about the game. Everything else, it all puts itself together. So um, I learned a lot from him from that standpoint as well. It's just let everything flow, and everything will come together. And I think he was good at that too in life, uh, Billy was. Just let the flow go, and, and uh, everything will come together. Uh, yeah, when you're talking about Billy, I mean, the one thing you got to think about is love. Billy loved his family, Paige, uh, Drew, and Ron. Loved them, but he loved football, especially St. Michael football and Archangel Radio, Mike and Ellen here at the studio. And uh, being able to do inter, uh, games with him and, and to learn um, football broadcasting with Billy, that's, that's, that was an experience. Um, I'd never done it before. Billy had been around the, the football broadcasting world for a little while. But they, they put us together and, you know, we get ready, we practice, kind of like Tony was talking about, you know, Billy was very meticulous about the equipment, make sure everything's rolled up right, uh, making sure that, you know, we had everything under underway. We went to our first game was in Florala, drove all the way over there. Um, the road trip with Billy, those are always fun. Um, if you don't know this about Billy, he'll talk a little bit. He, he'd talk to you. Um, but, but it was a great time. We stopped, took a picture on the way so we'd have something, you know, to remember it by, and I thought that was a great picture. Um, we got there, and it was this little booth on the 30-yard line, and, you know, I'm not exactly a small guy, and Billy wasn't tiny, so they, they crammed us into this little three-foot section. We had the equipment set up. It was me and Billy butt-to-butt in there and uh, trying to broadcast, and everything we thought we had good, and as soon as the sun went down, the plexiglass had so many scratches on it we couldn't see, and there was no lights in the end zones. So, I mean, those are the kind of things just with, you know, working with Billy starting off in this, it was it was great. But uh, his love for St. Michael football and for the kids, he knew everybody. The parents, he knew the kids. I mean, it was just such a dynamic thing to have him on the broadcast team and, and kind of guiding the, along the way to, uh, to help us out and to know what was going on and who was doing what. Cause you know, like I said, we were learning all along the way. Um, but uh, you know, it's been a great experience. It's, it was, uh, it was fun. Billy made it fun. Um, we learned a lot and going to miss Billy, but um, we got a video of Billy and Drew kind of one of those last uh, family nights there at St. Michael. And um, y'all need to check it out. Cause it's got some, some fun parts and you just really never know when it's going to be your last interview. And so, Billy, Billy, this was his last one here, and we want y'all to kind of watch it and enjoy it. Perfect. And if anything else, it wasn't all about the fun with, with, uh, with uh, uh, Billy as well. Um, and one thing you want to do is check out, there's an interview he did out at that family night we talked about with his son. And it's, it's really, it's, it's a fun interview. Um, it's unedited, I think. There's a lot, of, uh, a lot of funny stuff that goes on there between him and his son. And uh, it, it's a good memory for Billy, and I'm sure the rest of his family, and I bet everybody here will care for it as well. Uh, Billy was bigger than life. Uh, was, was so, so vivacious, the most vivacious person I, I've ever met. And uh, I'd always remember him you know, coming to the studio and he'd say, Mike, and I'd be like, Billy, Billy. And uh, we would get together each week to create the uh, the teasers for the football games. And those were those were like the, the audio uh, clips that were they were kind of like hype audio clips to get people ready uh, for the games, and they were very creative. And I would um, we would get together, and, and one of the most uh, memorable clips uh, that that we did, the most memorable teasers that we did was uh, we did a parody of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And I think it was St. Michael's either first or second year. And I had uh, Billy and, and Rob come into the studio and uh, they would portray uh, Billy and Ted. And I was, I was Rufus, kind of guide them, guiding them along the journey through St. Michael football. And we just had the absolute best time ever. Wild Cardinals rule! Well, Billy, it's hard to believe that after tonight's game against Alberta, the season of believing draws to a close. Right on, Rob. What a most excellent adventure it's been. Hey, how totally rad would it be if we could go back to the beginning? Are you thinking what I'm thinking right now? Magic, Magic Mike! Mike!
Yo, word up. Where we going, dudes? How about to where it all started? Socrates? Dude, I'm pretty sure it's Socrates. Wait, I think Socrates is trying to tell us something. Whoa, dude. Can you give us, like, the Coach Phelps translation? Well, again, I mean, you know, like I said, I mean, you know, I think what Socrates is trying to say is that after a cardinal victory, all Alberta is going to be is like just in the wind, dude. Excellent. All right, Mike, let's try the beginning of the season of believing this time. This is Cardinal Football on Archangel Radio. Bradford takes a snap, rolls it out to Grant Murray, flea flicker down the right side. Gets to William Ford, who is still on his feet. He goes into the end zone. Five. Touchdown, St. Michael. Oh, that was fantastic. Wonderful. Under pressure, throws the ball. Has his receiver. Touchdown, St. Michael. And touchdown, Lightning. Way to go, Josh Murphy. Bradford's in the shotgun. Got two receivers to either side. Sexton with him in the backfield. Hands it off. Sexton gets right up the middle. He's at the 20, the 15, the 5. Touchdown, St. Michael. Overthrows and intercepted by the Cardinals. Grant Murray gets and gets up to the 15-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds. Hey, and that's number two for Grant Murray that's as far as interceptions go. Touchdown, St. Michael. That was a fantastic cut by William Ford. I mean, on the jet sweep, he came around the right side of the line. He got there. There was one man to beat. He juked him into the end zone. Touchdown. Thanks, Magic. What a season, and I'm still believing. Most excellent, Billy. Now let's finish the season against Alberta and get that W. Wild Cardinals rule! Uh, there was another one where Miguel Tulin was playing, I think it was um, Central Phoenix City uh, for the uh, the semifinal, and we were going to do, the Central Phoenix City, they're the Red Devils, so we were going to do, <laughs> talk about uh, the, the part in the Bible where Satan is tempting Jesus, and um, he wanted me in, in my devil voice uh, to say, Lest you dash your foot against the stone. And Alan was like, No, no, you guys can't do that. <laughs> and Billy and I would just, just die, ball out laughing. Uh, we had the absolute best time uh, making, uh, making the teasers, and um, uh, the, he, Billy was my muse. Billy was my muse. And um, that's, that's what I'll always remember about him. If, if ever I was in a, in a jam, like uh, had a mental block, had a, I could always count on Billy to, to come up with something. And I'll, I'll never forget right after uh, I, I, I produced the, the whatever teaser I was working on, I'd always send it to him first and um, to get his approval. And I, I would love it because he would say, Excellent. Uh, Billy was known for saying excellent. Uh, even when I had uh, a, a, an off time, I, th- I think it was um, the first, uh, the, the very first broadcast that I worked on as a producer back in 2016. It, it didn't go so well because I'm trying to do operate the board and I was new to it and uh, be the talent at the same time. And uh, I would always tell Billy, all right, I'm going to, you know, I messed up this last night. I mean, I messed up this past weekend. I'm going to, I'm going to get it this time. And he would always say, excellent. (laughs) So Billy, uh, Billy, Billy believed in me and Billy also believed and and, and loved his kids too. Ryan and Drew uh, would, would rave endlessly about them. Talk about uh, the game that they had, whether it was lacrosse or you talk about Ryan, um, doing great in his uh, cross country and, uh, and, and the records that he would beat. He just had a, a, a passion for people, a passion for other people, a passion for life. And that came out in his football broadcasts. Uh, I know he called, uh, I think it was uh, one of the players he called Lightning. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he just had a, a, a great, uh, every player ha- ha- had a nickname. and. He would talk about those players as if they were his own kids, and in a way that they, they, they were. They were. They were. He was part of the family, and they were part of his family. And he made you feel like you were family to him. And he would always ask, uh, even off air, he would always ask about my kids. As a matter of fact, the last interview he did, um, 
uh, I call I called him up and I said, "Man, that was great! I had so much fun." And he was like, "Yeah, man, that was great. Uh, it was excellent." Uh, hey, how are your kids doing? How's Donnie? How's the next you know St. Michael football QB? And um, that that's what I'll, I'll I'll miss about him is his his passion for life, his passion for other people, and uh, he was always. Um, he was always just just so warm. Gave the best hugs, uh, and he uh, we did a um, he had the best parodies too, the best song parodies. Uh, he would do parodies for uh, the Lino Ruli, uh, the Catholic Guy show with Lino Ruli on Sirius XM, and he would do parodies of famous you know eighty songs. And matter of fact, last year during Lent, we uh, did a parody of the Glory of Love with Peter Cetera and called it the glory of Lent and he played for me when, when they played it on air uh, Billy played for me the conversation they were breaking down the, the song uh, lyric by lyric and they could not stop laughing they absolutely loved it and then Billy and I uh, were, were laughing because they were just cracking on the song but at the same time they were like this is the best parody we've ever gotten you know, Billy, it's that special time of year. It's that time when we, uh, we fast for meat, but we do it for a reason. We celebrate the resurrection. It's Lent and very clear, just like every year. We choose to fast for meat on Fridays. It will be a struggle. But I won't stop trying to atone. Don't stop trying, Billy. Don't stop right, trying. Keep going. That's right. Sometimes I just forget. Oops. Eat some barbecue brisket. Breaks Christ's heart when I'm not trying. Thank God it's only, only 40, 40 days. days. Thinking about a for me calzone. Pepperoni, sausage, ham and bacon. Shut up. Oh. oh my gosh, shut up, please. I am a man who will fast for your honor. How the lamb year we've been dreaming of. Friday lasts forever. Knowing together that we did it all for the glory of Lent. I do it for something. Ain't that right, Billy? Oh, Christ, a good reason. Stomach is growling, young. Yearning for a big meatball. You keep me strong when you're beside me. How about some beef stew? We could smoke some ribs at home. Oh, yeah, now you're talking. Smell it. I am a man who will fast for your honor. Give up the tacos we've been dreaming of. Friday lasts forever. Knowing together that we did it all for the glory of land. Thinking about a Chinese buffet or some hot wings to go. Maybe we'll stop at Chick-fil-A in a white castle far away. Road trip, y'all. You know it. Getting hungry thinking about those sliders. Fried onions, mustard, pickles, mm. relish. I am a man who will fast for your honor. No more fried chicken. No, we've, we've been dreaming, dreaming of. of. Fish sticks forever. This gray school. Suffering together and we did it all for the glory of land. Oh yeah. Live in the studio, 
2021. Will it forever? Knowing together that we did it all for the glory of the land. We did it all for Lent. Repent. We did it all for sin. For him. We did it all for Lent. <laughs> it's just it, it was it was those it was those moments with Billy that that were the best because that's when he was living life that's when Billy was a grinder that's who Billy was Billy was a grinder and I think we should all um, live our lives like that grinding every single day it's a it's a grind but you gotta love the grind. Billy loved the grind. Billy loved life. Billy loved other people. And Billy also loved his Catholic faith. Uh, his Catholic faith was, was extremely, extremely important to him. Uh, there was never a moment where he didn't bring up um, something that he was doing over at St. Lawrence with Paige and, and, and the boys. And, uh, speaking of uh, of Paige, I mean, he loved loved Paige, and uh, I would always come to him too for for marital advice, you know, parental advice. And uh, he said that uh, uh, he, re he recalled one time where um, he didn't get Paige anything for Christmas because she said, "Oh, you know, if you get me this, then don't have to get me anything for for Christmas." And Billy said, "Don't believe that." <laughs> <laughs> so uh anyway i think for christmas one year i think he surprised uh i think it was christmas anyway he, he surprised uh i was trying to surprise uh page with a, with a big screen tv and uh he could not stop talking about it he told me his plans all right i'm gonna hide it in you know drew's room in, in the closet and then you know come christmas time or whatever you know i'll get it out oh she's gonna love it man you can help me put it up i'm like i'll, I'll, I'll do what i can billy uh <laughs> i'm not the, i'm not the macgyver like you and so anyway there, there was billy and Paige. they were supposed to go somewhere i guess to see drew and uh Paige had left something in the closet upstairs and Billy's like oh no she's gonna see it and of course she did and she's like is there something you want to tell me <laughs> but um uh, yeah B Billy was 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 a MacGyver that's that's for sure he, he was the equipment manager for the first year uh with um uh with with McGill Tool and Football before moving on to uh uh, to the on-field reporter and me and and Jamie uh, McMillan, another uh, uh, another my, my producer and co, co uh, my assistant uh, in the uh, in the booth here, uh, we all we all we would all uh, do a segment. Uh, the pre we did the pregame show for McGill Tulin, and we would call each other before the uh, before the broadcast uh, earlier during the day and say, all right, what points are you going to bring up and. Um, uh, I remember I would, I would forget, I would call, I accidentally call Jamie Billy and Billy Jamie, and uh, they would give me a, a hard time about it. And <laughs> it was, it was one of those ongoing jokes, but uh, anyway, um, I, I, I'm, I'm sorely going to miss uh, Billy this year and being able to call him up and say, all right, what, what, what are we going to do for, for, for this teaser? For, for St. Michael football. Billy would also help me write uh, the, the promos for St. Michael football. And uh, there was one where St. Michael was supposed to play the, the Jackson Aggies. And we, uh, we, we made a, uh, a Children of the Corn, which was an, uh, an 80s horror movie uh, reference, and just <laughs> could not stop talking about it. Of course, we couldn't air it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's my favorite memory of, of Billy uh, producing this, the St. Michael football promos was that, um, was that Jackson Aggies 
promo that we that we wanted to produce and wanted to air, but obviously couldn't. Billy was a MacGyver. There is there's no re no wonder why he became uh, an insurance uh, salesman. I mean, he uh, he could fix uh, anything and everything, at, at, at the, and would do it at the drop of a hat. I know we had a um, we had a cord uh, for uh, we were going to do a a live broadcast uh, for uh, the, the I think it was the March for Life, and one of the the, the cords, little the little prongs inside the cable got bent. And we called Billy up, and he came and, and, and fixed it. And uh, we were able to do the, the, the live broadcast. Uh, speaking of broadcasts, I could all, Billy could fill time. Billy was phenomenal at, at filling time. He could just talk and talk, talk. Billy could talk for hours about anything. And I knew I could always count on Billy after a McGill Toolit or a St. Michael football game. Uh, I could call him up and say, hey, listen, I need to fill, you know, 30 minutes. And he's like, all right, good, fine, let's, let's do it. And we had, on air, we, we had the best chemistry ever. And we, we, we could fill, together, Billy and I could fill, you know, 24 hours if, if we had to. Uh, and, and just, uh, it was always the best conversation. My last conversation uh, Billy uh, was—he would always ask about my my boys and my, my kids. I've got two older boys. I've got two boys. We 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 love talking to Gil Tulin and St. Michael football. He had uh, not only a, a a passion for for other people for for the players, which came out in his broadcast. Billy just had a passion for life. Period, and uh, he was always. Grinding. Uh, every time I would I would call him up and ask him, "Hey man, how, how's it going? What you been up to?" He'd just say, "Oh man, hey, you know, just grinding." And uh, matter of fact, the very last thing I, I, I asked him, I texted him. Uh, I think it was a Wednesday when he was in the hospital. I asked him how he was doing, and he said, "Grinding." And uh, that that. That always stuck with me, and so I decided to uh, put grinding on my uh, on my license plate. And um, we, uh, he he would always ask me uh, during the broadcast, our, our last broadcast together. Uh, he asked uh, how my kids were doing, and I, because I told him, I said, I think Donnie's going to be the next. Uh, uh, St. Michael football QB to maybe lead him to a, a state championship. Uh, Donnie's 11 years old, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, so he would always ask about him and my son uh, Jordan, who's about to turn 10, and uh, my daughter Stella, who's seven. He would just um, he, he truly, Billy truly cared about uh, other people, and uh, like I said, just B Billy had a passion for other people. A passion for life and he was always grinding in life and I think that's the same the same kind of principle that, that, that we should take with with our lives grinding it out every single day and whatever you do you grind you work hard you live life to the fullest and that was Billy grinding now, without speaking of uh, St. Michael football, now without further ado, I'd like to uh, show you a clip of our last gathering together. Uh, Drew, um, Billy's son, uh, Drew, uh, was working as the uh, last summer as the strength and conditioning program, which, by the way, Bill, Billy would rave about um, McGill Tulin's strength and conditioning program, and he would always talk about how big, you know, Drew had gotten and how proud he was uh, of Drew for coming on board to help um, to help St. Michael football. So this clip you're about to see is the last interview between Billy and his son, Drew. I hope you enjoy and I hope you, and I'm sure I know you will get the, the essence of Billy when you see this interview. All right, we're here with Drew Langford. He's been an intern for strength and conditioning and, and uh, coaching for the football team for this summer. Uh, he's a senior at Barton College, uh, studying uh, exercise science. 
So, uh, Drew, tell us about uh, how long have you been here for uh, for this internship? I've been here for about three months. Uh, pretty much the whole summer, I watched them work out, uh, practice every single day. Yeah, so and you, you've had this thing planned for a while because you and, and uh, Paul Knepstein, the athletic director, you guys go back to your McGill Tulin days. Yeah. So, so let's go back just a little bit before we get into the rest of what you've seen here at St. Michael's, but or at St. Michael, excuse me. The uh, God, these bugs. You're gonna have to edit that part out. <laughs> I may not. Don't worry. I may not. Hey, you're supposed to suck it up, radio guy. So, Come on, man. All right. So anyway, so let's talk about McGill for a second. So you spent, you know, you spent four years uh, at McGill, three of which you played football, uh, one of which you were on the state championship team, and you found while you were there that one of the single most important pieces to y'all's success was the strength of the program. What was it about that program that made you want to study that in college and make you want to come do an internship like this and help the players at St. Michael? Um, I mean, McGill definitely helped me uh, become an athlete that you know, I wanted to be because I was not athletic. You know, going into my freshman year of high school, I ran like a six flat 40, not, not very fast at all. And then uh, first year in the uh, weight room and stuff, I ended up shaving it down to a 5 2, and now I run like a 4 7. Uh, so, I mean, okay. I fell in love with it whenever I was in high school, and then, you know, going into college, I felt like that's what I wanted to study. Get your dumb on put it on our back all right, so so you had this great experience at at, uh, at McGill. You guys were able to, to win the, the state championship for the first time in McGill team history, and a big part of that was because of that strength and conditioning program. You guys were always undersized, but you were always in much better shape. So how is it? You know, how is that? shaped what you brought here to St. Michael. When you're working with these kids and, and these players in the weight room and you're seeing what they're doing out on the field, how does what you went through influence how you're teaching them and what you're trying to teach them? Uh, well, going back to what you said about us being undersized, we were definitely undersized every single game. Uh, but I, mean, I think one thing, it wasn't just the weight room that helped us. I mean, yeah, that helped us a lot too. But it was about being disciplined and like the little things that we do. Um, whether it be on the field, in the classroom, uh, really just in our every single day life. And uh, I think, I mean, it's taught, brought, uh, brought that with me all the way through college. And, you know, I hope I can teach them to all about the, like, the little stuff. So when, when you've been in the weight room here, because you've been here all summer, thanks to working this out with, uh, with, with Paul, the, uh, what are some of the things that really stand out from your time here uh, working with the players in the weight room? What are some of the specific things that you saw uh, that were really good or things maybe that that uh, that you were like, Ooh, you know, maybe we need to stay away from that, but here's how we get better. Um, I mean, they progressed a lot, like, really well in the weight room, uh, strength-wise, and even some of their forms. Uh, I mean, their form wasn't exactly the best when we first got here and stuff like that, but, um, you know, I definitely taught them some of the good stuff, like, help them have good form. Uh, I didn't really see anything that, like, they need to shy away from uh, at all, so. So what, so you, I mean, one of the most important things you said was form. Why is form so important? So you don't get hurt. <laughs> All right, so, so it helps you not get hurt, but it also helps you get the most out of the, out of the lifts so that you're, you're being, or you're maximizing your strength potential. Yeah. Okay. What other things have you been able to work with with these players since you've been here? I was the assistant uh, receiver coach uh, throughout the summer, so helping them run. Know, good routes, be good with their hands on uh, releases, and um, getting better at blocking whenever they got the pads. So, so who are some of the players that you saw uh, at the wide receiver position that really were were having a big impact with their either their route running or with their blocking or something that you guys were trying to really work with them on? Uh, definitely Micah Farrell and uh, Braylon. Uh, they both did really well. They're both leaders on the field. Um, and plus, I mean, they run phenomenal routes, and, and I mean, they work their butts off every single day practicing in the weight room. All right, so you mentioned the weight room, and I should have asked this question before, but in the weight room, who are some of the players that really stood out? Uh, definitely Ezra, um, uh, Josh Murphy, a little big energy guy in there, uh, and then Benjamin and Luke on the other line. Uh, they really helped bring a lot of the energy. And even some of the younger guys, uh, like Carson um, and... Uh, Jovi, uh, really, you know, big energy guys, guys. All right, well, that's exciting. 
that's exciting to hear that you've got you know some of the the more seasoned players that are taking the leadership roles. You got younger players that are taking some leadership roles. Uh, as you you know, as you've had a chance to uh, to be here and you're getting ready to leave tomorrow, uh, what is you know what are some of the things you're going to take away from this internship? Uh, I mean, definitely the experience. Um, definitely got some tips on how to coach, what to do, and what not to do. Um, you know, I mean, really just gaining experience was a pretty big thing for me. All right. Well, well, Drew, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much, and good luck with uh, with your school year this year. You know, you've got uh, you know you play lacrosse at Barton College, and you guys uh, had a big season last year. Yeah, coming off a, a trip to the playoffs for the first time, and so you guys want to build on that. So good luck to you, and thank you for spending your time here uh, with St. Michael for this internship. So good luck to you, and uh, thank you very much. St. Michael, defend us. There you go. That works. Stay good, Chase.